Hello all, I am Narain from Shastra Team University, Tanjaur. This is a short video lecture on flow through packed bed. This is part of the course of uh, fluid mechanics for process engineers. In this video lecture, we will see how to develop uh, expression to estimate frictional pressure drop in a fixed bed system. Now, as usual, I am not going to do a detailed derivation as part of my lecture. I am only going to give the salient points that will help you to read uh, the relevant material in the textbook or reference book. Now, after uh, you can hear this video lecture first and using the inputs received in this video lecture, you can go back, read the textbook or the reference book for this pertaining part and then we can clarify the doubts in the later session. So, the objective uh, at this end of this video lecture is to arrive at an expression to calculate frictional pressure drop. Why we need to calculate frictional pressure drop? Because we know that in order to pump a fluid, we need to know the pumping power and the pumping power is a product of flow rate, is a product of volumetric flow rate and the frictional pressure drop across the system. So, let us consider a flow through a uh, fixed bed as shown uh, in the schematic structure here. So, you have the fluid going in, the fluid uh, uh, going in is described either by the volumetric flow rate typically given as meter cube per second or in terms of the mass flow rate specified as kgs per second. And this is a bed filled with particles and you have a distributor, the fluid meanders through this, the spaces in the bed and we need to calculate what is the frictional pressure drop across this bed. Now, we already know the expression for a, a flow through a pipe system which is given like here, delta Pf is equal to Fd friction factor into half rho u square, rho is the density of the flowing fluid u bar is the superficial velocity, length is across which this pressure drop is measured and the diameter of the pipe. So, that means if we can convert this fixed bed to an equivalent pipe flow system, then that means our job is done. So, all we need is now, is it possible to convert a fixed bed system to a flow through pipe system? Now, if we want to convert, then we need to do two things. We need to convert the entire flow path that is there in a fixed bed to an equivalent flow pipe system and also the reason uh, for the pressure drop is because of the shear stress at the wall or because of the no slip boundary. So, we need to convert uh, whatever is the friction that is experienced in this fixed bed system to also an equivalent flow through pipe system. So, let us take the first point that what it means by converting the flow path. So, the flow in the fixed bed uh, is primarily due to the interstitial spaces, it is the space between the particles. So, that means we need to know how much space is available for now for the fluid flow in this uh, fixed bed system. So, the space available between the particles in a fixed bed system, what do you mean by this? That means we are talking what is a void space or the free space that is available. So, when it means by free space, those are the spaces that is not occupied by the solid particles in that system. We can call this uh, free space uh, in terms of a fractional volume. So, what I mean by a fractional volume available for flow or the fractional free space available for flow is the volume that can be occupied by the fluid when it is flowing to the total volume of the fixed bed. So, this volume occupied by the fluid to the total volume is given uh, by a letter epsilon, is notated by notation epsilon. So, epsilon is void fraction or is a fluid holdup. Typically, if liquid is flowing, we call this as liquid phase holdup or if it is gas is flowing, we call it as a gas phase holdup or voidage. Now, if we take this notation and expression for epsilon, then that means we know that, that the volume occupied by the solid particle is nothing but 1 minus epsilon. So, that means volume occupied by solids to the total volume uh, of the fixed bed is uh, Vs by V, which is nothing but 1 minus epsilon or typically it is notated by a notation epsilon s. So, epsilon s is a solid holdup. So, together if you add epsilon and epsilon s, we should get 1 which is nothing but the volume occupied by the solids and the volume occupied by the fluid. Kindly note here that when we say volume of the bed, we only take the volume from the uh, all occupied within the bed. So, that means we only take the volume between the distributors, we do not take in these free volumes in our consideration. So, that is one thing that uh, you should remember. So, that means uh, this epsilon is something that uh, we will use to convert the flow path in a fixed bed to an equivalent flow pipe system. The next is uh, what is the equivalence for the wall shear. Now, why is the pressure drop is there? 
we know that pressure drop arises primarily because of the no slip boundary at the fluid solid interface. Now, when we take fluid solid interface, so that means it is at the surface of all the particles. So, that means we need to know what is the total surface of all the particles that is there in the bed. So, let us consider suppose if NP is the number of particles in the bed and DP is the size of the single particle, then that means uh, the surface area assuming that it is a spherical particle of uniform size, we will have it as a pi dp square. So, that means uh, the total uh, particle wall surface area or the total fluid uh, particle surface area is NP, the number of particle times the surface area of all these particles. So, now let us uh, do the conversion. Now, what you can see here is a fixed bed and what I have shown on the right side is something like we want to convert this fixed bed to an equivalent flow uh, through system. Now, the diameter of the bed is given by the letter D, the height or the length of the bed. Now, remember it is only the length or the height of the bed that is given by uh, the letter H. Now, on this side, you we will consider as if this flow is not going through particles, but the flow is going through number of parallel uh, pipeline systems or pipe flow systems, each pipe is of the same height as that of the bed. So, this height and the length of the uh, pipe is same and the diameter of the pipe is what we want to, we do not know when we want to find out. Let us call this as uh, equivalent diameter DEQ. So, we have two constraints or two conditions that we have to do. One is the flow space in this fixed bed should be same as the flow space that is there in this pipe flow system. So, that means the total volume that is occupied by the fluid in this fixed bed should be same as the total volume that is occupied by the fluid. Now, you can see I have shown the volume occupied by the fluid uh, highlighted in yellow. So, the volume occupied by the fluid here should be same as the volume occupied by the fluid here and uh, the particle wall uh, surface area, the area primarily which gives this no slip boundary in this bed should be again uh, the wall area that you can see in this flow pipe system. So, with this uh, notations, if you take the first conditions that the flow space or the flow volume that is available in a fixed bed should be equal to that in a pipe flow system means, so the flow volume uh, or the flow space free space in a fixed bed is equal to epsilon times V because epsilon is for the fractional void volume times the volume of the bed primarily gives you what is the volume that is occupied by the fluid in the fixed bed. Now, when it comes to pipe, the volume that is occupied by a single pipe can be calculated as the cross sectional area of the pipe times this height or length times the number of uh, pipes. So, that is what is written here. So, this term primarily gives the volume of a single pipe, single pipe channel times n like n number of pipes are assumed here. So, uh, this n times the volume of a single pipes gives the first condition. The second condition is the total wall surface area that is available is NP into SP that is equal to the wall surface area in a pipe flow system. So, the wall surface area in a pipe flow system. So, uh, the wall surface is the circular lateral surface wall. So, it is uh, 2 pi r or pi d into h. So, into n to n is the number of channels. So, what is NP? NP is the total volume that is occupied by the particles to the volume of a single particle. NP basically gives the number of particles. So, how to calculate number of particles is from the total volume that is occupied by the solids and the volume of a single particle. So, the total volume occupied by the solids is given by the expression epsilon s into V divided by the volume of a single particle let us give like Vp. So, NP into SP can be written like this times SP. Now, VP which is the volume of a single spherical particle, we know it, it is pi by 6 dp square. Volume of this fixed bed is pi by 4 d square h and we know epsilon s is 1 minus epsilon. So, you primarily have two equations. The first equation is to denote the condition that the flow path in a fixed bed is equal to the flow path in a pipe flow system. The second condition primarily gives an equality for the wall shear in a fixed bed system, the wall shear area that is available in a fixed bed system is equal to that in a uh, flow pipe system. So, if you simplify these two equations, primarily substitute one in terms of another, we get an expression for the equivalent diameter. 
So this d equivalent is given as 2 by 3 dp epsilon by 1 minus epsilon or 2 by 3 dp epsilon by epsilon s is the diameter of this fictitious imaginary pipe channel system that we are considering. So that means the pressure drop what we are trying to say is the pressure drop across this bed is equivalent to a flow through pipe system such that the diameter of this fictitious pipe is given by this expression. Now you can also get the expression for the number of channels that should be there and I refer you to go back to the book and know it. So now let us come back to the pipe. So we have converted it to a pipe. So we know what is the friction pressure drop across a pipe. So we can write it as Fd half rho v square into L by D equivalent. Now if we consider both laminar and turbulent terms, one can write the pressure drop gradient. This is the first constant. This is for the laminar part and you know the laminar part is viscosity times velocity into uh, D square and the second is primarily the uh, the inertial contribution or for the turbulent part. Now can you just think what is this u should be uh, in this expression, in this expression which is actually the pressure drop for an equivalent pipe through system. This u is actually the average velocity through the pipe. So that means the velocity through which the uh, fluid will flow through the uh, space in the pipe flow system. So that means that average velocity or the velocity through this pipe flow system is actually the velocity through which the fluid will again go through this bed. So that means the because we have said the free spaces here is equal to the free space here, the velocity with which the fluid goes here is equal to the velocity with which the fluid meanders in this bed. That is given as the volumetric flow rate. Now let me go here volumetric flow rate divided by the flow area. Now you know that the entire flow area is not occupied uh, by the fluid flow because only part of the area is available for fluid flow the rest is occupied by the solid. So that means this flow area is only epsilon times the total area that is available uh, in the bed. So Q by A we call it as a superficial velocity by superficial velocity what we mean by the volumetric flow rate by the total uh, cross sectional area or the empty cross sectional area. So this actual velocity or the interstitial velocity in the, in the bed or in the pipe flow system is equal to u bar by epsilon. So if we substitute the expression for interstitial velocity and the equivalent diameter in this generic expression for a flow through pipe, you will land up in an expression like this. This first part is called the cosini Karman part and the second part is called the Buick plumber part. These are independently found out by a combination of these four uh, physicists. So they did experiments in the first part they did experiments at a lower uh, Reynolds number typically in the laminar flow regime and they got this pressure drop to be proportional to viscosity uh, and uh, linear with respect to velocity whereas inversely proportional to the square of the diameter. Whereas at very high uh, inertial flow regime or the turbulent flow regime, this was proportional to the mean kinetic energy <coughs> and inversely proportional to the diameter. Now these constants were evaluated uh, uh, from experimental data from uh, based on linear regression to be 150 and 1.75. So if the combined equation we can have like this 150 mu u epsilon s square by dp square epsilon cube plus 1.75 rho u square epsilon s divided by dp into epsilon cube. This combined expression giving the frictional pressure drop in a fixed bed system is called the Ergen equation. So I at this point uh, I, I would like to summarize and I would want to see that what and all we saw is like we saw what is an equivalent of a fixed bed system. We saw what is hold up and void edge, we saw what is equivalent pipe diameter, so which will help us to convert a fixed bed to a, a pipe flow system. We also saw what is interstitial velocity and superficial velocity. Interstitial velocity is the actual velocity which means the fluid goes through the pipe and we arrived at a, a expression which helps us to calculate the frictional pressure drop in a fixed bed in terms of the superficial velocity and the particle size. I would like you to go back now and refer uh, McCabe and Smith, McCabe, Smith and Harriot. This is 7th edition in chapter 7 for a detailed derivation and reflect on this. Now some questions for you to think 
I am not going to answer these questions right away, but I just want to know like if these questions also propped up in your mind. Is there anything uh, that are we missing in this uh, derivation uh, or is there anything we are taking for granted? Is there any implicit assumptions that you can think of? And do you think uh, why the wall surface of the column of the bed as such is not accounted? What if the particles are not spherical and not of the uniform size? What if you have a uh, size distribution? And uh, is this expression of Ergen equation is for a vertical bed or for a horizontal bed? If it is for vertical bed as shown in the schematic, then what if the flow is down flow? So, you can first read through the relevant material in this uh, textbook and then try to think on this, arrive at your own explanation and then we will take it up in our next class. Thank you once again for your good attention. Bye.